miracle it was. All right. Um, yeah, so just, just to elaborate on what Liam's saying, um, what, what we're proposing for the next merge window, what Andrew is working hard to get merged in and keep it in, is um, the maple tree for storing VMAs, but we're not using any of the RCU functionality. Everything is still being protected by, by, by the MMAP SAM. So everything that we've, we're talking about with, in terms of RCU is future work, future development. We haven't even finished writing the code yet. I mean, we, we had a couple of goes at it, but there's, there, there, there's some problems, and it's a, it's a, it's a big win. Well, it's not, it's not a big win. It's a win in terms of code complexity, because we're moving code complexity out of the MM. Like, we're getting rid of the VMA cache. We're getting rid of the doubly linked list to connect all the VMAs together in a nice long chain. And we're getting rid of the RB tree, or at least the, the usage of the RB tree there. <laughs> right. um, so what I wanted to talk about, about was the, 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 the future of, you know, how, how do we see this going forward. Um, so what, 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 I, what, I, what I drew up quickly um, during the last talk, th this is how a read fault works today. Right? And, and I, I, I took x86 as the example, because why not? Um, so in the x86 do user address fault function, we take the mmap read lock, and we then we call find VMA. And so the whole way, the whole way after this, we're, we're we're expecting the VMA to stay stable, because we're holding the MMAP read lock, and if you if you're going to change a VMA, you have to take the MMAP write lock, and so we're, we're guaranteed it will stay stable. And we pass the VMA down, and the problematic bit is when we get into double underscore handle MM fault, and we call P4D alloc. PUD alloc and PMD alloc. And I'm really glad that David went first because he's, he did a fantastic job with those slides explaining what all these acronyms mean. Um, but the problem from an RCU point of view is that those use uh, GFP kernel allocation. So we might end up doing page reclaim, we might end up sleeping, waiting on page write back to happen and memory to become available, and it is all a giant mess because obviously you can't sleep while you're holding, while you're holding the RCU read lock. Um, it's actually okay after that. Th those are the only, th that's the only bit which is really causing me heartburn right now is that we've got these three GFP kernel allocations. Um, and to add insult to injury, most of the time you don't even do them because they already exist. But of course the possibility is that you've never touched anything in this P4D before and you've got to allocate all three levels. So, Paul, I'm so glad you're in the audience. <laughs> um, I, I think there is another mic floating around. Um, I, I've proposed a couple of ideas to Paul and I, 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 he then asked me some trenchant questions and, and, and I didn't quite get around to answering them. Um, one, one question is, uh, if you had something like SRCU that did not have the read side full memory barriers, would that make things easier? Oh, I wish Laurent was here because... Um, Somebody can find him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's only, you know, 10, 11 o'clock there. Right? Well, no, it's, 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 it's nine hours difference. It's... Yeah, it's, it's 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, I still yeah, be awake. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, so... Um, SRCU has been tried for this before, or, or for SPF before. There, there was an SRCU variant of it, and there were performance problems. Now, this was a few years ago, so maybe those performance problems are now fixed. Right now, there would be performance problems. Performance problems are there, would be there already. The difference is that I might have a way of uh, letting people choose between having the read side be slow, which is the current choice you get, period. Um, and having the right side be, you know, the, the grace periods be a little more contorted, which, um, but I would want to use it before I did that. So my question is, if you have something like SRCU where you have to have the SRCU struct, um, and, uh, but there was a way of doing it so that, I mean, you're going to have probably a preempt enable in there, okay, in the read side, so you're going to have some tests. Uh, maybe in both of them, maybe not, I don't know. I'd have to go through it. Uh, but there would not be a full memory barrier. If you had that, would that would that get you to the point where you could just throw the critical section around the whole mess and not worry about it? 
and that's actually to both of you, both uh, Matthew and Mich Michelle, for that matter. I don't know. I, 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 I think more, more thought probably required. I mean, my, my instincts say that actually that should be fine, but um, I, I, I think recent bugs for me have indicated that I do not understand memory barriers in any functional manner. Nobody does. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I think there are cases right now where you would hold the uh, MAP read log for a long time. So, I mean, in this case, it might be fine, but the question is, like, w how long could the grace period be then? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's your SRCU struct. <laughs> no, seriously, that's, that's, the, that's the reason that the SRCU has the multiple things. Is uh, uh, it, with normal RCU, if anybody anywhere in the kernel decides they want to hang out in the read side for 100 milliseconds, that affects everybody. All right. Uh, the thing about SRC, I mean, you could even have one per process if you wanted to. Okay. Well, that's uh, yeah, we could embed it into the MMAPS uh, MMAP struct. Yeah, so the MMAP struct needs in some extra size, right? I mean, it's too too lightweight. We need it's, to it's only like two it. kilobytes or something. I <laughs> yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, or you could just have a global one for all of them, depending on, you know, what the readers were doing, right? I mean, you know, it's, uh, I mean, if you're having trouble allocating one, you're probably having trouble allocating the other. It's not clear having separate is useful, but, you know, I don't know the code. Who knows? We don't want to start the fault, uh, most faults will be very fast, uh, but, you know, there's always going to be once in a while that, you know, hits the allocation cases or hits a slow disk. And so most faults, you know, take, you know, microseconds, and then once in a while there's one that takes 100 milliseconds, and you don't know at the start of the faults which one it's going to be. Right, but um, are, is it the case that processes have different backing stores? In other words, if uh, one process is having problems allocating or all the other processes, or is there something with C groups and namespaces and something like that that means that some might be fast, some might be slow? Michel's nodding his head, but I'm not sure which way he's answering. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, essentially you can end up in both uh, MMCG reclaim and the global reclaim. So no luck there. Okay. So, so we would want to have per process mode is what you're saying? Well, per MM struct. Well, in, and in FS reclaim, wouldn't we have a variable time based on which FS reclaim we're going into? Say it again. I was just too busy not screaming. <laughs> so the, the FS reclaim is really a wild card in itself, right? Like, we don't know how long that would take. So it, if we end up in FS reclaim, all bets are off that we're going to make the deadline. So actually, I mean, I've got a room for them and people here who can, who can shout at me that I'm stupid and wrong. Um, my inclination is actually to make GFP kernel explicit rather than implicit to all these P4D, PUD, and PMD alloc cases. And in this path, at least the first time through, we make them GFP no wait, and we actually handle the, 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 the failure to immediately allocate memory. Um, and the, so the, 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 the intent is that the quick path just does it unto us to you. And you know, the quick path is we already have these things we already have these levels of the page table in place, or we can allocate them immediately, and the pages are in cache. What I haven't shown here, because, you know, slide's full, is that format map pages can fail. It can say, well, the page you've asked for is not in the page cache, or, yeah, the page, page you've asked for is in the page cache, but we're going to have to run read ahead in order to fetch the next batch of pages. So, yeah, you can have that page, but you, you're still going to have to drop the lock and, and do I.O. Um, and, and so it, it will return a pet fault flag retry or whatever it is all the way back up. And in that case, we would take the MMAP read lock again, right? We can fall into the slow path. That's fine. As long as, as, long as you know, the 99% cases, we do the whole thing under our CU read lock and never touch it. You know, we, we're already winning, right? So. so who, who, who's with me on actually, actually adding a GFP flag to these three levels of page table allocation? That would be a lot of code to change. Less than you'd think. We really don't allocate page tables in that many places. Oh, uh, and, 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 and you're like this. That makes vmalloc able to operate with not GFP kernel flags. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this hasn't <laughs> been a technical problem, I believe. That was mostly that uh, you've got those um, B alloc functions for all architectures, so you would have to touch the, a lot of arch architecture code. Um, have, have you seen how big my folio patch sets have been? Yeah, that's why I'm not looking so, there. You, you know, you, you, you're, you're not scaring me here, Michael. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to not scare you because uh, you are hard to get scared, but all the people who would have to look at a code and essentially be aware of all those subtleties that might be there, like, I don't know, those continuous page tables in, in uh, our architecture and and whatnot. So uh, I don't think that's a huge technical problem rather than do a lot of work because for some reason this would be really, really helpful to have from the very beginning, but that's not the case. Do you, do you even need a GFP flag or can you just go to the slow path um, whenever there is not a PMD already there? Because I, I, I worry about the case where you have like a big virtual mapping and you start faulting everything like sequentially and with GFP no way you never go into reclaim right so you could pretty quickly deplete all available memory without being forced into reclaim but because the PMD is mostly going to be there right it's just the first hit that has to allocate it and then all the subsequent ones wouldn't have to fall back yeah so, so if you're doing if you're doing the GFP no wait it, it, and you would have to reclaim you just fail and the, the response to that is to go back to do user address fault, acquire the MMAP read block, and then try it again with GFP kernel instead of GFP no wait. Right. So that's going to force you into the reclaim path unless somebody else did the work for you first. Oh, then you wouldn't have to update. You wouldn't have to add a GFP flag, right, if you just go to the slow path if there's no PMD yet. Like, don't even try to allocate it in the fast path, not even with no wait. Just don't. Oh, if it's there, you do the fast path. If oh. not, then you fall back. And mostly it's going to be there. Hmm. That's less code to touch, but that, 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 that's, that's really interesting. We, sh we, should, we should try that. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, so um, where we're going from here. The, uh, <laughs> well, I'm, if I can have a question um, to Paul, actually. Uh, so if um, we have that, that whole thing in in a RCU, uh, what would or what could actually happen if uh, the reclaim or any part of of that path just depends on RCU in some re really awkward way? Because we simply don't know. Because those are reclaimers that are out of MM hands, and uh, so you actually cannot make any assumptions. Is that possible even remotely? Well, so first off, uh, I'll end up giving you like three answers because we have three different things we're talking about. Okay, so the first one was had a modified SRC to be fast enough. In that case, it's a different thing off on the side, and so there's no interaction unless you make it be. It's your own RCU you've used. So if you put an interaction there, well, okay, you shot yourself in the foot, right? Uh, which happens. I do that a lot myself, so you know, it'd be you know, welcome to the club. Uh, the next one is if we um, used a GFP no weight or whatever it was. Okay, in that case, you go off in the reclaim. Um, it probably has RC readers. If it does a call RCU, that's fine. It just goes off, and that's great. If we're to do a synchronized RCU uh, or a synchronized RCU expedited, that'd be a problem. But if that were to happen, um, uh, LockedUp would yell at you really quickly. Um, so if you were doing that approach, my advice would be to do something to just force reclaim on the path manually. I'm pretty sure you can do that. You're looking as if you can't, which maybe you can't, but if nothing else, just have something else allocate a whole pile of memory and that'll force it, all right? <laughs> this can be done. Um, and if you had did that in a kernel with locked up enabled and you tried to do a synchronized RC or RC read site critical section, it would yell at you. Okay, about uh, assuming it, and your next thing is, well, maybe it happens only sometimes, and yeah, I can only help you so much there, right? In the other case where uh, if you aren't doing the allocations and you're doing you know, what Johannes was suggesting, then clearly, uh, you know, you aren't, hopefully that doesn't force a reclaim um, if you don't allocate, but what do I know? Did, yeah. that, did that answer things or Yeah, I actually something? yes, because the, the answer is that this could be really dangerous if any of the callbacks that are living outside of the page fault, so they're not under the mm -hmm. direct control of, 
of, uh, of that code path um, actually do something that it's uh, synchronizing RCU, which can be uh, so, really so, hard. So for, yeah. so for example, just to give one example, um, in RCU torture, if it were to be doing a callback flood, which has made the reclaim happen, and it gets the, the uh, callback from the OOM handler, and then says, I'm going to do an RCU barrier, you think that might cause a problem? <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, there we have an example for you. Um, you can worry about other things. I don't want to stop you from worrying. Go ahead and worry about other possibilities while you're at it. Is, it, is, that, is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so we do have an example where it could be a difficult. The, the, the barrier and, and the sleepable, is, it's a full barrier, right? The barrier in which one? In the sleepable RCU? Yeah, it is. Where's, where's the catch box when you need one, you know? Uh, okay, so in SRCU as it exists now, yes. Okay, there's a full barrier. That has not always been the case. Uh, there was a time a long time ago where there were just three grace periods, three RCU grace periods and SRCU grace period, which caused trouble, all right? It's possible now to make something kind of in between um, where we don't have memory barriers. Where, where basically, it, it would be possible to have a thing where you say initializes SRCU struct and make it be a fast reader one. And that will be some penalty. I don't know exactly what right now off the top of my head on the update side. If you do a grace period, there's something's going to take longer because. And, and, and I like that because intuitively, like, <laughs> in, intuitively, that's exactly what, what RCU should be. Like, most users will assume that readers are cheap and writers are expensive. So, it, the way you're, you're, you're proposing um, uh, optimizing um, sleep up RCU, that makes sense for any users because, like, hey, readers are going to be cheap, but at the cost of writers. I, I agree, but any is a strong word. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess the, the other part of this is um, uh, the VMA handling. Um, and, and in that, in that case, we were thinking that for this, for this to work, um, once you RCU read a VMA, it can't somehow change to the point that the address you were interested in no longer is in that VMA. And that basically means instead of uh, resizing VMAs, VMA adjust and split would, would be essentially use new VMAs. So the VMAs would be RCU safe by being RCU freed. So, um, yeah. So that was that's kind of the other part of this. Uh, I I don't know if that's that's a problem for anyone or how how. Yeah. If the VMA has changed like that and now it. The old VMA you looked up at the start of the fold is not current anymore. You still need to detect that at the end of the fold, probably, before you commit any new mappings to the address space. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so we were thinking about uh, a flag for that uh, in the VMA flags, uh, an inactive. So if you uh, hit a VMA that has an inactive flag, you know there's something happening to that VMA, and you keep looping until it's gone. Yeah, basically you, you abort the page route and you try again either, either the same way or with the lock. And, and that um, flag would be, that, that flag on the VMA I think would be synchronized by the page table lock. Right, so once you've got the page table lock, you know that you can check that flag and it's going to be valid for the duration of, okay, right. there, there's, there's potentially a lot of, um, oh no, you, 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 you once, once you have the page table lock, you, you, you can check the flag. Because if the flag changes on you while you're holding the lock, right. the person who um, it has, has set that will then take the page table lock and tear down all the mappings. That, that's a bit similar to, to SPF. I mean, I don't know if I want to talk about it right now, but that, there's a lot of similarities. That, it, it, that's good, because that seems like the sensible way to do it to me, so I'm glad that it's also the sensible way to do it to you and to Laurent, so that's right. good. 
Um, yeah, I mean, do, should, should we compare and contrast our approaches here, or, or do you want to? Yeah, we, we could do that. Um... So the, 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 the way that I see Michelle's um, code is that it, it's, it's sort of, uh, your, yours is perhaps separated in time and ours is separated in space. That, uh, so, so the SPF version of this is instead of taking the, RC, the MMAP read lock at the top here, you take a sequence count on the struct MM struct. And so any modification to any VMA while you're doing the rest of this will, will be checked right before you do the insertion. And uh, if, if the sequence count has changed, then you know that somebody has changed something somewhere in the MMAP struct. And so that might be the VMA that we have a handle on. And so we abort. We go back to the top and we take the read lock and, and we do the whole thing again, actually protected by a lock. Um, where, whereas what Liam and I are doing is are separating in, in process address space that a, uh, a VMA is um, you, 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 you're, you're inactive flag per VMA, that there is no sequence lock on the MM struct. It's simply done by checking the VMA that you were looking at to see whether or not it's being killed by a, uh, a, an, an MMAP operation or an MProtect operation or something. So, the, the, I mean, the, you're, you're still going to see false, uh, false retries with our approach. Right, because if somebody's called mProtect on a giant VMA, it you know it would have caused that VMA to be split, and well now now you had to replace two maybe three parts parts of it with with, with new VMAs, and so you know there's there's going to be unnecessary retries still um, with with both approaches, uh, but hopefully fewer with, <laughs> with 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 our approach. Yeah, I would think that it would be. Um Per, being per, per VMA, it just means that it, it has to hit that, that one area, right? Um, yeah, it's going to be less. Yeah, I think there's, there's a few places you have to be careful, not just at the commit at the end. So uh, if you go in handle MM fault, you know, when you go through the existing page tables, you do have to be careful for the page tables not to be yanked from under you. Uh, which can be done with RCU, but always uh, like you know, like uh, clearing uh, interrupts so that you so that you won't uh, have TLV shutdowns, depending on architectures. Uh, so you have to be careful there. There's the place where we take the page table lock on the page table that we find. Same, you have to make sure that. That it's still the page table at the in, it's still the page table at the instant where you try to get that log that it hasn't been young from under you, and then yeah, all the way at the end when you're gonna commit your pages, when you already have the page table log, you have to make sure your VMA is still the right VMA for what you want it to do. I think that's that's that will be similar whether we do it to SPF. So in SPF we kind of have the same approach except all of these three places that I mentioned have their own small RCU protected section and we don't care about the whole thing uh, being, being one big RCU block. Uh, but I think that's kind of an implementation detail whether it's we have one big RCU block or like three or four along the page fold. That's kind of a similar idea uh, in, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that, Michelle. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. I forgot to mention that what, one thing that we're definitely going to need with this approach is that page tables get freed um, under RCU protection. That's already the case for some architectures. It's even the case for some x86 configurations. And I forget the details because I looked at it once and I ran away screaming. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, get less scared of that. And OK, Michael, it turns out there are some things I'm scared of. Uh, and RCU page table feeding is one of them. So I'm kind of hoping somebody else does that, but um, I'll do it if I have to. And uh, David wants, oh, okay. I was going to give you David the mic, but go on. Thanks. So, I mean, like I had a look at that whole mess and like, I mean, page tables are just horrible. The, the thing here is whenever, and I think I mentioned that to the, to the SPF series is we, we don't only need like freeing of the page table under RCU, we have to make sure that also any 
let's call it auxiliary data that is clued to the page table gets freed using RCU. For page tables, that is, for example, the page table lock. On some architectures, it's embedded in struct page, on others not. And I think we'll get more into that, that problem domain once we, for example, use some dynamic allocation of like so, a struct page parts as, as uh, you that's imagine. Easier. It is easier. I mean, maybe it's not so buried deep down in some cold chain, um, but yeah. We actually have that unresolved issue in the current SPF budget, and that's that really only that's configuration dependent. That's if you have a split PT logs and that you gonna allocate the spin logs instead of just having them in the struct page, and. I think the only configuration, legitimate configuration that triggers that is if you have config RT preempt that will cause your spin logs to be bigger and you're gonna hit that issue. Um, I think also, on, I think on X, uh, if you have 32 bit architectures, I think it might also apply, but I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure how we want to handle that. We could definitely write the code to also defer the freeing of the split PT logs. Yeah, and that, that, that brings me actually to the point that I was trying to come to is that the way we currently free page tables is a mess. And I think like we should defer that whole deconstruct, like there, there is some, some, something called deconstructor for page tables. We should find a way to defer that to the actual freeing. I have no idea how we would do that, but maybe that goes into the same direction of what you propose. And, I've, I've worked on that code before. I have thought about doing that, and I just didn't see a particular need to do it that way. You have a use case. Let's do it. I, 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 I can win that patch up for you in 15 minutes. Let's, let's do it. OK, thanks. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. What would be a nice conclusion? That's a deep question. Yeah. <laughs> what would be a nice conclusion? Um, well, I think the the best the best plan would well first of all Maple Tree the, the stuff I have out now doesn't conflict with either path forward so that's that's great. Um, uh, if FS reclaim went away, that would be a great conclusion, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, <laughs> so we're going to have to figure out allocations in, with in with outside the uh, the lock, the IMAP lock, um, for certain things. Um, this is still really this is step two, right? And and then there's other things that can be done to to better. To, to go further in, in our in our grand scheme of, of the beautiful sunny rosy eyed future, um, Matt, Matthew, you wanna? I mean, there, there's 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 some interesting problems we've been having uh, around um, slab preallocation, and it's like, oh uh, yeah, this this is this is. So it's, it, the basic problem, and, and we have one of the slab maintainers in the room, this is fantastic. Um, we, uh, the basic problem is the usual, I, I'm, I'm holding a spin lock and I need to allocate memory, right? And so you, know, you don't want to go into GFP reclaim, et cetera, et cetera. So what we've been trying to do is pre-allocate at the top and then take the spin lock and, and go through. Um, The, the the code paths, the, the, yeah. The code, this is updating the maple tree, yeah. Um, or even, even the, the perhaps the worst is you know an M protect in the middle of VMA. So we need to allocate three new VMAs, and we need to allocate uh, three times the height of the maple tree plus one nodes. So we need to get quite a lot of memory pre-allocated to be sure that we won't need to allocate memory at the bottom when we get all the way down to the bottom of the tree and find out that we're in our, our worst case scenario. But of course, that is the worst case scenario, right? When generally we're not going to need it. So what we really want is a very efficient way to have the slab allocator say, 
from this slab, I want 28 objects. And then a short while later, here's 26 of them back. Mempool, really? Is it? Is oh, oh, that, that, yeah, that, that, that's that's the classic hack. Yeah, I, I hate mempool. <laughs> it's perhaps irrational of me, and perhaps we should just be using mempool. But um, it, I mean, I, I've I've. I, I've gone outside my, my boundaries and I've, I've looked into the slab allocation. It's like, you know, why, why, why not just give us a detached free list? And then we just pop a couple of things off the top of it and, and then hand you back and say, here's your detached free list back. And maybe? <laughs> He's not saying no. <laughs> we'll see. OK. Well, that's, it's, it's not a no. no we, could, we, we could look into this. All right. Yeah. OK. I'll get Vlastimil to do it. <laughs> he's not here, is he? Yeah. No, he's he's there, probably watching on the stream. Though. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he's yelling at us on IRC right now. Probably. Yeah, so um, I really expected a lot more on this. Um, I, I don't really have anything else. Uh, did you have anything else? No. Did you want to talk SPF now? Well, I think we're going to start with SPF soon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I want to say in general, I think we agree on the big directions that we want to do lockless things, but it's the details. Like we always, well, first we keep fighting on the details, uh, but also, uh, I mean, whenever we try it, 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 there's always a few things we didn't see coming and so. I mean, I think it's time we get started actually getting stuff in uh, with that because it, we've been talking about it for a long time. I might, I might have a question re regarding that. So w what scared me a bit, scared is the wrong word, but with the SPF series was that it introduced quite some supple lockless versus locked semantics to a lot of page fault handling code. That, that scared me a bit. It made the code significantly, in my opinion, harder to read and understand. W with the approach that you're proposing, would that also be true that like we would have similarly complicated page fault handlers, or would it just feel much more natural? Like, the, let's call it that the delta for people that are like know their way around the page fault handlers would be smaller. I think the delta would be smaller. I mean, so th this this is no. Oh, sorry, I'm not, not supposed to move away from the podium. Um, so what what I have up on the slide is this this is the state of today, right? Um, what I would change from here is the mmap read lock would be not taken the first time round. What, 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 if once you return with a fault flag retry, um, we would in fact take the mmap read lock. So you know it's going to be an if first time round take the RCU read lock, else take the mmap read lock. So it's, it's not going to be a huge semantic change there. It's, it's a few extra lines of code, but eh. um, depending exactly how we solve the P4D alloc, PLD alloc, PMD alloc thing, you know that's a tiny little bit of extra code there. You still have to do the little dance of. Uh, while you walk the page table tree, check that it doesn't go away from under you. Uh... No, because 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 it's it's, it's all under the same RCU section. You you, you you have to care about that because you you have different RCU sections. But I've got one big RCU section, so I I can do all of this stuff speculatively and then check well, that the VMA has a change at the end. Will be, RCU won't be you won't have to clear interrupts for for that. I mean, it's not true today, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it won't, but once once the once the page tables are properly being freed by RCU, we won't need to do that stupid interrupt disabling dance. That, that might also be true for when we acquire the the page table log, that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, we we have the same issues in in like two or three places, and right now I kind of do the little dance every time to make it safe, but. Uh, But uh, so the, there's going to be a bit of extra code that's not on this slide, where we do the actual insert into the page in, into the page table, 
and so we, we'll check the VMA there to, to, just to make sure it's not dead. Um, but I see very little change in the file-backed path. Um, but I think about file-back stuff because fundamentally I'm a file system guy. I don't think about anonymous memory because I'm not really an MM person. Uh, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm a file system person at heart. I don't understand these, these unnamed pages. They make me uncomfortable. <laughs> Anon is a lot of the same, but it's a lot more likely that you will have to allocate a page. Uh, and then at the end, when you have your page, you kind of have to check you still have the right VMA. Uh, but that's one of the things why it might not be convenient to have the same RCU section because most of the time you may have to allocate a page. Or at least a lot more often than in the file. I, I guess something that's going to change a lot of this for both Fileback and Anonymous is using larger pages. Um, once, once we start deciding to allocate even like order four pages for both files and Anonymous, um, we're, we're, we're going to see like PMD alloc be needed many times more often. Um, and I, th I think that's going to change the whole cost-benefit analysis. Or if it doesn't, it wasn't worth doing. <laughs> I think of having one single RCU section or several, I don't think it's such a big deal. We could always, you know, terminate the RCU section, allocate pages, whatever, Get start the next RCU section, check if the VMA is still, uh, you know, uh, not expired, whatever the expired bit is called. You, you, you can because you've got the C clock and the and you know the MMAP stem hasn't gone away. We can't because the VMA may have gone away. So when if if we drop the MMAP, if we drop the RCU lock, we have to re -lock, we have to recall find VMA. Now it's in a maple tree rather than an RB tree, so it's going to be quicker to find, and that may not be a huge performance penalty to do that. But it, it does mean that I do want to see us at least try to allocate um, a PMD page before we give up and say, oh, we'll just drop the lock and, and, and try again. Yeah, that, that works with, so the way I do that in uh, SPF is that I actually make a copy of the VMA originally, you know, when I get the VMA, and, uh, and then I can do my check using the, the sequence counter. I have a sequence counter that's uh, updated by any byte. But that won't work with you and with uh, looking at this uh, expired VMA bit. Um, I don't know. Well, that means you're pre-allocating though too, right? You're, you're making a VMA copy. Uh, <laughs> but he, he's no, pre he's the stack. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's make sure it doesn't get too big. <laughs> There's also VMAs have the proto. You guess you don't check the proto pro the. He said VMAs have allocations in the VMA itself, right? So if there's anything you need to check in there, don't, don't check it, I guess. Uh, the, there's a piece of the VMA. In the VMA, what is the name? The I don't remember the part that gets cloned. When, when you clone a VMA, there's certain things that get allocated besides. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just copy the. Just, I just the start and the end. Reference yeah, the reference structure. OK, OK. So don't use them. Yeah, w one thing that I would like to ask us, um, and we have uh, discussed that two years ago and probably uh, more in the past, uh, is that uh, uh, with uh, Maple Tree, do you think that it's still worth to consider uh, the range locking path or just moving straight way to uh, RCU uh, is the essentially only reasonable choice because uh, as I read uh, the maple tree um, kind of guarantees that you get, maybe just uh, getting the lookup to be 
RC where and do the rest by the rage locking that would be tied to the VMA that it's already, uh, we have a less data structure to, to look at and, and probably that might help a lot without too much subtlety. So you what want to do the range locking with the maple tree as like a half step to RCU lookups? Right, because that would, that can turn out to be uh, a, that might show up a good performance um, improvements already, because you rarely do page faults from different threads on the same VMA. So, um, and I mean, RB3 was terrible for uh, that kind of thing because you have to do all the rotations when, when you manipulate stuff, but this should just make it so much easier. So have you considered that or it's just that end? And yeah, so I was looking at that and I was actually looking at because we do, it's a range tree, you could potentially have a lock per node, but it just takes up too much space uh, in the node to do that. Uh, and then we started looking at just locking on ranges and it, and it, it it's a lot of complexity uh, only to turn around and throw out. So I'm not sure if, if you buy much by just doing the half step. That, that's, that's my opinion anyways. So one, one of the approaches that we've explored but not written code for is that we could put a, um, essentially a, 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 a read-write SAM into the VMA and then uh, each, uh, I've, 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 I've forgotten all the details of this because I thought about this, you know, a year ago and, and then I went off to work on folios. Um, <laughs> so uh, when, 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 when we look up the VMA, we're using the entire VMA as the range lock, essentially. Yeah, that, that, that's what I have in mind. Um, and so you would still have contention on the VMA as, as you... Um, um, as, as, as you acquire the read write SAM for read, um, but then you have the read, you, 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 you can then drop the RCU read lock at various different points because you've got the VMA for read. And, right, and, right. You, and you, know it's, you know it's not dead. Um, so, you know, that, that, that actually solves a bunch of problems, but it does then create contention on that one VMA. The, this the, what, what, I've, what I've been describing is the, the writeless path, or at least uh, we're not writing to the, the VMA struct. We're, we're, we're writing to the page tables, sure, but I mean, that's kind of the point of a page fault is that you write to the page tables. It, it is, it, this is, this is, this, what I've been describing is a writeless path. And yeah, there is definitely a version of this which is, a, w w which is lockless until you get to the VMA. And we could absolutely do that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm perfectly happy for us to iterate towards an, an end goal um, if, if the community at large is willing to go through all these locking changes <laughs> over and over again. Um, and, and, you know, may, maybe we'd never get to, to, the, to the, the rightless stage that I've, I've been describing because it would just be good enough be, to be RCU but I, I think there's I think there's applications that have these giant VMAs, like terabyte size VMAs, that are going to say, "Well, thanks, but you haven't solved my problem." Yeah, and that might be a good push for uh, later work for you. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just going for the ten out of ten gold star problem. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to go for the eight out of ten uh, solution first if 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 people want that. Just recognizing that it will be more disruptive eventually. Over the long term. Over, yeah. yeah. So do you, I don't know if there's anything else. Um, I don't really have anything else. Of the uh, of the VMA sem uh, semaphore, it would have to mean that a parallel operation has taken place. That VMA could be going away, in which case race is, is uh, it, the fault is racing with the thing just disappearing. So I don't think attention on a VMA semaphore would be as uh, as, as severe as it is on the MAP sem. Yeah, 
Hey, Mel. Great to hear from you. Thank, thanks for, thanks for dialing in. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you're right. It's, it's not going to be nearly as bad. Um, I just think that for some workloads, there's going to be some applications that say, you haven't helped me. The, the gamble would be that someone that's creating a very large VMA is likely managing it themselves and they've done it for the express purpose of avoiding MFSIM. So while there would be applications that would have terabyte-sized VMAs, chances are they're, ma uh, they're managing their own memory quite explicitly uh, for the express purpose of avoiding uh, any parallel operations, meaning it's also less likely to go to see any contention. There'll be some cache line bouncing acquiring it for read, um, but the but the the level of contention that you'd have for a threaded application that is allocating and faulting its own address basis is uh, completely different to what it is on just pinning the uh, VMA itself. Okay, I mean. If, if, if people would, would rather that we take that step forward and then only later go to this, if, if that's, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to work on that. How about you, Liam? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, I was looking at, when I was looking at the range locking, I was looking at locking each individual portion uh, layer of the tree as we walk down. But if we're just going to RCU read lock and then uh, lock the particular VMA, then yeah, totally. Thanks, everyone. We started already about uh, talking about SPF, and um, there was introduction, so I'll I'll have to cut it short a little bit. So I just want to present the current state of the things 